When you teach adults and children sex negative messages, sex becomes an undifferentiated mass of wrong. If all sex is wrong, then why try to tease out good from bad, pleasurable from painful? When students are taught not to think about sex, they aren't going to spend any time determining what they do and don't want, or what they might be interested in. Of course they're going to have sex eventually, but when it happens, will they be able to communicate it all through the veil of guilt, shame, and self-loathing that sex negativity encourages? Sex negative messages don't keep people from having sex. They keep people from having good sex. They keep people from having pride in their sexuality, from sexual self-awareness. They keep people from asking questions about sex and communicating with their partners. They discourage experimentation. They blur the lines between consensual sex and rape by framing all sex as an undifferentiated mass of bad. Okay, so sex ed classes in general tend to be taught with facts, but the real message that they're putting out is don't do it. It, it, it's one of those things that's obvious, but nobody really internalizes it. That you don't realize that all those little things that you don't tell your partner yeah. can end up ruining the relationship. And even if it doesn't build up to that point, if you can't tell your partner all these little things, it's not, that, it's not all that much of a relationship, is it? Do you think people should talk about that from the very first time they're intimate with each other? Absolutely. Being fully liberated in this culture is borderline impossible. That you're still going to absorb some of that repressive negative attitude towards sex. And the vast majority of people who claim to be liberated, uh, they claim to be not inhibited, that they're really just deluding themselves, that they've got self-esteem issues, they have to put off that kind of image for the sake of their own self-confidence. And I'm not completely liberated that I've still got my inhibitions, and that's part of why I got into doing this. It's part of my journey towards shucking all of that cultural bullshit. Which, there's some truth to that. Uh, but the problem is that that leads to most guys getting most of their knowledge about female bodies, and sex in particular, from porn. That it used to be magazines, and then cable TV came along, and then there's the hardcore pay-per-view, and now the internet has bloody everything. But it's still up to you to sift the wheat from the chaff, but with nothing to base that evaluation on, then it winds up with the greedy leading the blind, and garbage in, garbage out. There are seats up here, come on. Have a donut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing an instructional class in sex, here in the South. What I like most about your lecture is the optimism that no matter who you are, no matter what you're quote unquote working with, if you can learn the art form of communication, you can have amazing sex. I mean, nobody's um, restricted from it. Everybody has equal opportunity to have it. Right. Obviously, communication is key. Telling your partner what you like and getting the same feedback from them. But the other thing is a willingness to experiment. So, let's start with the definition of sex. And I'm throwing this out to you. How do you define sex? Is it like a girl or a guy? Yeah, I see some of you laughing. <laughs> and most people know somebody, usually female, who's done all kinds of other miscellaneous sexual activity but has yet to put a penis in her vagina and is proud of her virginity. <laughs> There's so much misinformation out there. Urban legends and just sheer bullshit that people don't know how to sift what's true from what's not. And you're not going to figure that out unless you ask questions and try to feel out what's real, what's not, try to piece bits together and people that have to work in isolation and just, if your only source of information is what comes off the internet, not necessarily gonna do you much good.